Hello. Thank you all so much for being here. I really have been appreciating the comments, the chats, just people getting involved and really enjoying these talks. So thank you. And I look forward to seeing your own. And yeah, just keep letting me know how these go. Let me know how this works for you, what you're up to, what's new. Um, yeah, here we go. Today, I would like to work on these VCAs. I wanna see what I can do with that. So I'm gonna get right to it because this is kind of a, a patch that gets messy quick. So I'm gonna connect the LFO to a little bit faster of a clock divider. I usually do 0.25, but today I'm going to do two for the main sink. And then I'm gonna actually modify it today with 0.5. And then I'm going to run the hi-hat. I'm gonna keep it basic with the uh, rhythm stuff that I've done before, 16 and four for the hi-hat. And then I'm gonna do eight and one let me see, 16 for hi-hat, eights and one for the snare, which is actually gonna go through the pulse converter. There we go. Uh, yeah, and then I'll do the bass drum here first before I start connecting everything. Bass drum is going to be, what should I connect the bass drum to? It's going to be a little fast there. I'm going to try two also. So the bass drum and the uh, LFO are running off the same clock. And uh, I'm going to use one VCA. The one on the right is going to be for the ducking of the kick drum. The VCA on the left is going to be manipulating the bass module. And the LFO is going to be the CV connected to that VCA. Let's get into it. That might not have made sense to everybody. So let's hear what we have so far. Simple, simple. So I'm going to turn all the volumes down because they're all going to be running through that VCA except for the kick here. Ooh, exciting. All right. Hi hat here. Not going to be able to hear it until I start running it through the VCA. So appreciate your patience with the. Uh, it's got a static machine running on my Octatrack playing a little background sound or something that I. I don't even know what I made. It was just glitchy. All right, so all the drums are plugged in. I'm going to take the outs of these drums, run it to the input of this right VCA. All right, so snare drum, hi-hat, running out there. I'm even going to take the out of this bass and because I want this bass to play melodies or be more kind of, it's, it's a little more abstract, it kind of catches you. I, um, I don't always know what I'm gonna get from it. I'm gonna run it through a reverb to kind of soften it up. So I have the effects set on delay. So if I ever open it up, here you can even, it'll just be delays. You see? Um, so the reverb channel is basically wide open for the bass module. And I'm going to run that out into the VCA. I said I was going to run it through so that all that sound is just, oh, let me turn on the reverb. You won't hear it because it, the bass is going out into the reverb, out the reverb, into this VCA, which is just going to go right next door to the same VCA as the snare and hi-hat. So I hope that makes sense. It's all running through there. All my sound that I'm gonna be getting is running through this VCA, and that is going to be manipu manipulated by the envelope. That first has to run through an inverter in order to make it pull down and get a ducking on this VCA. And that out is going to be going to this CV. And because you don't get any, um, well, you can adjust the volume this way, but I wanna keep that kick loud. I'm gonna run the out of this first through an attenuator so that I can control that volume. Throwing cables all over, getting so excited. It's such an exciting day. And I'll throw that in the mix in. There we go. We've got a hair on my pulsar. How about that? It's getting so old, it's growing hairs. 
a little teenager. All right. Cool. And just to add a little variation to the hi hat. There it is. Uh, cool. I'm going to. One fun thing I wanted to mention in this video is um, running on MIDI um, clock. I can connect this clock pin, the clock in and out pin, and I'm gonna use that as actually an extremely fast rhythm as well. So every time this bass module hits, I'm gonna have my hi-hat roll. I'm gonna do that by connecting the envelope, envelope, envelope of the bass to the CV of this switch. So every time the shayas hits, we're gonna get a little, nice little roll from the hi-hat. And what's cool is it's so fast that you can actually just plug it right in. It doesn't have to go through a pulse converter or anything. So watch. Cool. And that's going to get more fun and rhythmic once I uh, set this bass module up. And I'm going to connect that to the Sheas, which I'm first going to clock with four. And I'm kind of meeting both of these in the middle. The LFO usually I like that on the uh, slowest and the Sheas I usually like on the fastest. So I usually 16 and with this one 0.25. But today I'm kind of bringing them both towards the middle a little bit more. And to trigger the bass, I'm going to use the three bit sample and hold pin there. See, already starting to do that. I can close the... Uh, And the more, um, the tighter you have this release, the more rhythm variation you're going to get because that Shayas does a pretty cool job of um, adding a lot of different levels to everything. And so it gets kind of fun. I can open up a little bit more. So basically, all right. So let's see what kind of sounds we're getting out of that. I'm going to actually, before I do that, I can get ahead of myself. See, a lot of stuff going on. So I'm going to connect the one bit sample and hold and the two bit direct to the CV of the bass module. So that'll change the pitch of the bass. So we get a little variation there. Cool. Got it. All right. Awesome. And the out running through here. Boom. Boom. Now let's connect the LFO to get some sound coming out of there. Forgive me. I don't know what this is going to sound like. <laughs> I'm glad it said forgive me because I didn't realize it was on high. I should have looked at that LFO. I was like, where's that sound coming from? I freaked out for a little second. But I hope that didn't kill your ears. <laughs> that just was the LFO in audible range running through the CV of that VCA, which can be a lot of fun. You can get a lot of, uh, you can get kind of like a, I don't know if it's FM or AM synthesis. I heard somebody calling it. I'm not really sure. I'm not that smart. Um, but basically what this is doing is just opening up and closing the bass. And that is being modified by 0.5. So basically every 0.5 is a little, little change. I could, I could switch that up and slow it down so that it, it does a that 0.25 on the mod too but I, I, I think it more frequency kind of nice but oh, anyway what we did when I first switched that on which rookie mistake should have looked at the speed of that LFO um, I really like medium or mid because you can get like a little tremolo and then all of a sudden it gets into that FMAM stuff because it's got the mod so when it That's basically all I wanted to show you. Um, I love that the kick is coming through because it's ducking a little bit and I feel like my kick gets buried a lot. I mean, it still is kind of buried. I need to maybe do a little something to it. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, before I go, I wanted to... Ooh, that's wrong. And still you're getting that variation from the, uh, the switch coming in there. I love that. That's fun. Um, cool. I think 
that was about it. I, th I said lastly just now, like I wanted to show you one more thing, but I think that's basically all I wanted to do today. Thanks for checking it out. I really do appreciate all your comments, all your, um, your viewing it. I can't believe so many people are watching me ramble and do this, but um, heck yeah, share yours. I want to see what you're doing. Um, yeah, more about this later. I'm going to try to come up with a system to write out patches um, using letters and numbers. Each module has a letter, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, walking across, and then each pin has a number. So I can say A2 to K4 or whatever, and um, come up with patches that hopefully people can follow and get creative with also. The last thing I want to say about these patches is these are for me, um, since this is a performance machine, um, these are ideas, the reason the videos, I'm trying to keep them tight, like keep them under um, 15 minutes or so because when I'm set, if I bring this out for a live show, if I ever do, I will, when I do, I'll, I'll stay positive. Um, in the 10, 15 minutes I have to set up or whatever, I, I want to be able to plug something in really quickly and just have a base of something to work with and know that it's going to be give me a variation, give me some stuff I can mess with, and I also want to know what I can do to mess with it. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing with this. And I would like to know more about how you're performing with it, or how you plan to perform, or what you want to do with this. Because I love this machine. As soon as I saw it and heard it, I, I knew that there were so many possibilities. And I'm sure you do too. Um, that's why you're watching this. So thank you. Um, want to hear more from you. Look forward to it. Don't take care, okay? Be safe out there. Let's have some fun.
Take care, y'all. 